Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HeckRaz, and in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing the editing tools within Raz Mapper. So what I have on the screen here is the Heck Raz Mapper user's manual. I'm on the editing tools page, and I'll leave a link to this page in the description. This is the page we're going to be using for uh, the content of this video. This is also a little bit of a preview to some of the geometry data tools that we'll be covering in future lessons. All right, so what I have on the screen here is a Heck Raz project. I'm going to go ahead and quickly open up the geometry data create a ge geometry file called base, save it, close the geometry editor, and then open up Raz Mapper from the GIS tools menu. Okay, looks like that was already open, but just minimized. Here we go. Here is my Raz Mapper. So uh, what I have already is one terrain file right here. This is Central Coast, California. It's an example tile from the USGS terrain data set that I've downloaded and installed and loaded into my Raz Mapper before. I do have a projection set that's right here. And uh, here is the terrain data. That base geometry file that I created is right here and it's ready for editing. So what I'm going to be doing is going to make some edits to this geometry, such as rivers and maybe a few other elements here. Let me expand rivers here, click on flow paths, and then some of these tools as well. Before I do that, it may be a little bit easier to get some different background imagery besides the elevation model. So what I'm gonna do before I go ahead and make some edits to the geometry is minimize the geometry and then go to map layers. I can do a right click on this map layers and then add web imagery. This is one option that I like. <laughs> um, so go ahead and click on the imagery that you want. This should already work as long as you have a projection set, which I do. So let's go with, uh, how about Google Maps and then click OK. All right, so that loaded in the Google Maps imagery. And uh, just to give a second option, let's do right click, add web imagery and open street maps and then click OK. OK, so I believe that also added open street maps, but it's behind the Google Maps. Yeah, so this is the open street maps. This is Google Maps. Let's go ahead and zoom in here on the mouth of the Carmel River. Okay, so let me toggle off the map layers as I zoom in here. Okay, clearly this is the, the, the Carmel River. So let me go ahead and zoom in closer when I have just the terrain data layer on. Now what I want to do is toggle on the map layers. Okay, so now I can see here is the river itself. And then let's just look at OpenStreetMap. Let's, yeah, let's use OpenStreetMap instead. And I realize that this is the ocean, but I'm going to actually consider this right here, the mouth of the river. Now it's time to start editing our geometry. So what I'm going to do is just kind of give a preview of geometry editing and general geometry tools without going into the details of all of these individual geometry elements. Okay, so what I have right now is the base geometry that I just selected. This is the geometry that we created over here in the geometry editor which uh, I can't seem to open right now. That's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go right click and then stop editing. And yeah, sure, save edits. And then right click and delete geometry. So we can delete a geometry just like that. And we can also create a geometry just as easy. I'll just call it base again and OK. All right. Whenever you create a geometry, it wants to, uh, it asks you what terrain it's supposed to be associated with and so on. I'm going to skip all this for this lesson. That's not uh, too important right now. But what I want to do is edit the geometry. And when I do that, I get all the different elements that I can be adding. So by checking them on, I'm going to see them in the map. Of course, I don't have any elements right now. And I can confirm that by double click, left clicking on the name of the geometry and getting an overview of the geometry data. So down here, we have a summary tab, which has a count of zero for the reaches, cross sections, and effective flow areas, and so on. As well as here is the path to that geometry file. Uh, saved on my local machine. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. There are two primary modes of editing. There's add new feature, and then there's also select slash edit existing feature. So let's go ahead and expand the base geometry. This is the only ge geometry we're going to be working with. And then let me uh, click on rivers and expand rivers. The options here is junction, bank lines, flow lines, and river station markers. So flow lines is the primary uh, line to use, and I'm going to select that first. And then when I click on it, by default, it already says to add new feature. So this is the first of the two modes. And then the second mode is right here, 
is to edit feature, edit an existing feature, uh, you know, assuming that there was already a flow path river to edit. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new feature first. And then, so I've got that selected. I know I'm editing because I have the little pencil icon right here. And then the stop sign here is the button to stop the editing of the selected layer. The selected layer is the bold magenta layer, which says flow path. So you know exactly which layer you're dealing with. That's uh, going to be true for both adding as well as editing. You can only add and edit the, uh, the particular layer that is selected and bold and magenta in text. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in to where I'm going to assume the mouth of the river is right here. And I'm going to make uh, just a number of clicks in the upstream direction to specify the center line of the river. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially for a lesson like this, where we're just trying to learn the basics of these editing tools. All right, so I'm going to single left click and then single left click, clickety click, click, click. Now, if I the edge and I want to recenter, I can just do a right click and then it'll shift and then I can do some more left clicks. Another way to pan without stopping the editing is the middle mouse. You get the pan hand, you can just drag. Okay, so boom, 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 boom. That's enough for now. When I'm done editing this flow path, I could just do a double click with the left and then I'm done. I'm still adding new features. I haven't changed the mode. So now I could just continue on. Let's say for instance, I left the gap accidentally. I could just do a single left click and then continue editing. Now I'm editing my second line. The first line still exists. It's kind of hard to see, so I might change the symbology, but it's light blue on light blue. <laughs> Let me go ahead and just advance the uh, the screen here with a right click, left click, left click. Okay, that one's a little bit off. We can go back and fix that later. Left click and then a right click to recenter. Okay, let's just go to this bridge right here. So I'll do a double click and now we're done. So if I wanted to save the edits, I could just go to the edit mode. And then now I can edit the feature, the flow path, because I still have that selected. I can't edit any other features because I have flow path selected. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. To zoom out, I'm just doing the rolling the mouse wheel back, but I can also uh, pan. I think you can hold down shift and pan. Yeah, so if you hold down shift, then left mouse button pans. If you're not holding down shift, then the middle mouse button, the roller, will pan for you. I'm going to go ahead and change the symbology here. This is actually the light blue line that denotes the what that flow path looks like on the map. So I'm going to double click that. It opens up symbology. Another way to access that dialog box is to right click layer properties. And then let's keep it blue, but let's just make it a darker blue. And then let's also make it wider so it's easier to see. And then keep the transparency at zero and OK. OK, so that should give us a darker blue river. We can actually see it now. That's good. What I'm going to do now is make a few edits to this flow path. And to do so, I'm going to click on the edit feature. It looks like it's already selected. And then make sure my flow path layer here within the river category of geometry elements is selected. And then I'm just going to drag. So when I drag, it highlights the specific feature that I want. I can just click off to the side to unselect all, or I can drag to select one or the other um, or the other or both. Now, say I want to merge these two flow paths. To do so, I will go up to the Tools menu here and then click on Merge Features, and boom, now it's just one single feature. If I want to undo, there's an Undo button right here, so I can click Undo, and it unmerges or redo. That remerges the two different flow paths. Let's see, there's a number of other tools here. Copy Features. Let me, let me zoom out here. So with my river selected, if I want to go Tools and then Copy Feature, then all I have to do is drag. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me undo that. So if I want to go copy, I select the feature. I click copy feature. OK, now it's been copied to the clipboard effectively. Now I think I can just right click and paste the feature. Yes. And now I have another river section just like the one. Same alignment and same shape and length as the first river feature. Now that doesn't really make sense in this situation. But for certain geometric features, you may want to make exact copies or make copies and then modify the copy somehow to save you time. But in this situation, it doesn't really make sense. I think I can just click the delete button. Yes. All right, let's make a few more edits. I believe one of my data points was off. OK, let's go ahead and just modify this point right here. It looks like it should be closer to the center of the river. So I'm pretty far zoomed in right now. What I'm going to do is click edit feature, make sure I'm on the flow path and then select this line. Then what I'm going to do is double click to see the actual points. 
And with it double clicked, I could just move this point right there and then adjust any of the points as I wish. If I want to delete a point, I can just select that point and then click delete. Okay, that's gone. If I want to add a new point, the cursor, my mouse cursor needs to be close enough to the line. So I just click the line and it adds a point on the line. And if it's if I if I'm not close enough to the line, it's not going to create a new point. So from there, I can go ahead and move that mouse cursor or move that point on the line to change the overall alignment of the line. And then also um, it snaps to the individual point. So the two tolerances, let me go ahead and uh, stop the editing. Say yes, I want to make this save the changes. And then, OK, so hold on. It kicked me out of the editing mode here. Flow paths. I think I have to uncheck it or check it on. OK, there we go. <laughs> My river's back. Yeah, as far as the snapping tolerance, that's handled in tools, options. And then under general settings, if you click on uh, editing tools, this I actually increased from 5 to 15, but I think it's a little bit too high, so I'm going to change it back to 10. This is the snapping distance in pixels to a point, and then when adding points to a line, this is the um, distance that needs to be within 15 pixels. So that's the, the distance there. You can go ahead and ch change those as needed. I'm going to go click apply and then OK. OK, I'm going to turn on bank lines now, and then actually let me... Click on the pan hand up here. When the pan hand up here in the main RAS mapper is selected, it disables the different editing options down here in RAS mapper for the different geometry elements. Whenever you want to make edits to the geometry, whether you're adding or editing existing features, you need to click on this cursor, this button right here, the select feature. So select that, and then you'll have options to do your edits. If I want to zoom out and see the entire flow path, I can right click and then zoom to layer. So now it shows me my entire flow path. We've already talked about add, edit, and then this right here is plot terrain profile. So if I go ahead and click that, it shows me the terrain of that river reach, starting at river station zero down here, and then going upstream. Now, this is probably isn't very accurate because this is just taken from the, the terrain file from USGS, which is not bathymetric data. So uh, who knows what exactly we're getting here. But you can see that the general shape is correct. It is generally increasing from uh, about zero feet up to about four or five feet over the course of almost a mile. Or I'm sorry, it's about 1500 feet in this. But I think in real life, it's closer to a mile. I just didn't convert from meters to feet. So this is actually meters. But uh, anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. I just need to make sure to uh, do the unit conversion when importing the terrain data. So that was, uh, that was a mistake I made right down here. If we wanted to start making edits to the bank lines, let me start at the downstream end. We can do that as well. I'll just go ahead and click add new feature. And with bank line selected, I could go ahead and start tracing out the bank lines and then right click to pan. Then we can continue on, right click to pan. I'm going to go middle mouse pan. I like that a little bit better. Okay, now if I was really careful about this, I would want to zoom in and make sure I'm, I'm getting things correct. But let me just stop it right there. And this would be my overbank on the left side, or I guess it'd be right side if we're facing downstream. And then I could do the same thing on the other end. Let me just go ahead and right click and zoom to layer. So now we have the main channel and then the what is the right overbank, that red line. I could add junctions and river station markers as well as cross sections and all the other elements you're seeing down here. So far, the only thing I've done is added lines, but the geometry could also include points like junctions. So if I click junctions and then made this the active layer, then I could just go ahead and add individual points. And then something like storage area or 2D flow area. These are different um, geometry elements that would be polygons, like areas, which have their own editing features. If I click back on flow paths, I just want to show a few more editing features that are available here. So if you right click, oops, OK, I'm, I'm on, on the add mode accidentally. There you go. I'm going to just change it to edit mode. OK, cool. So if I select edit and then I highlight my flow path here. I don't have to worry about accidentally highlighting the bank lines because it's not selected. So even if I try to select it, it's only going to select the features of the selected row right here, which is flow path. All right. So I could go right click and then there's a bunch of features in this selected features uh, features list right here. Copy. We already saw that I can invert the selection. I can select all. I can delete selected, move selected, view and edit points. I don't think we've seen this one. So if I click on view and edit points, this is not the station elevation data. This is now the XY. So we're looking at it from 
top down from a plan view where we have the what looks like northing and easting these x and y values are going to depend on the particular uh, projection i believe so this first row right here would be the downstream most point and then it would continue yes it would continue uh, in the upstream direction so it looks like already we have the 24 points were the points that i clicked to define that polyline for the, for the flow path there's some editing tools up here as well and then let's see what else did we have right click we can also split the selection reverse the selected so if i selected it and then reversed it and then select it again and then we took a look at the profile view now we, we're going downstream because i i switched the order or switched the direction also if i wanted to split the selected feature i've now selected split it into two different halves so we have a downstream half and an upstream half so now i'm really messing it up but it's not too big a deal because i can just right click and then merge Here's merge selected. Some of these features exist in this context menu, and then some of them um, as well as in this context menu right here. So now I've merged them. And then if I wanted to uh, reverse the order, just go reverse selected right here, and then we're back to normal because we are going in the upstream direction, uh, going up elevation. Well, that's it for this lesson. We talked about the editing tools in Heck Raz Mapper. What we did was we added in some background imagery and then created a geometry file, and then made some edits to the flow path, the bank lines, demonstrated what some of these buttons do, as well as some of the features that are hidden within the selected features.